another season of Ranked, another tier 10 session, another dirty, dirty Hakuryu attempt. I'm currently ranked 10 right now, just experimenting with stuff, so hopefully we can get it nice and clean. Hack versus Hack, but obviously Hack is the top tier competitive pick because she's very good against armored cruisers and battleships. Repub, Citadel Resistance, so he has a slight advantage here. But GK is easy peasy, Henry Venezia, Moskva, Smolensk. Have no trouble petting any of these. I'm gonna pick on the Moss if possible and one duty per side. Small, small style on the booster, so I have overall DPM advantage. My battleships are more susceptible to APDBs, and I have some Chinese people on my team. Talking about the grind from rank 10 to rank 1. Anyhow, chat aside, I'm gonna take a look and see what we see. We're on the map Northern Lights, most domination. GK spotted by him firing. Venezia spots himself with his spotter plane, even though I don't actually see him. I'm guarding the cap currently. I know I'm not looking at it, but Venezia feeling some pressure maybe? There's something beside him. Smolensk? Yes, so there's Smolensk is with the Venezia. GK is still yet to load in. There's the Repub in the distance trailing. There's no way the destroyer is here. Sorry, I'm a bit rusty. It's been a while since I've played. So I'll come back for the GK later. It's gonna push to a weird spot and I'm gonna APDB the shit out of him. But first, I'm gonna slow down that gearing push. My guess is that the gearing is right beside the Venezia, creeping along. Like, now the enemy hack has launched APDBs. So I'm just gonna delay any potential cap attempts by flying over with the rockets. Now this is gonna be an expensive strike because I did forget to pre-drop. I should have pre-dropped with my rockets once. Ooh, I get five of his AT APDBs, I think. I'm gonna recall immediately. 7k onto the gearing. He's obviously not too familiar. I need to move my carrier along. Now I would like to delay that further, but I'll take my 7k strike onto the gearing and punish this lone GK. I need to provide eyes for my Smolensk and Wooster, who needs to detach from this position. They're guarding this camp, but quite obviously the DD's up there. So I am going to temporarily Provide some vision with that plane. Uh, lone GK, no need to slingshot. So I'm gonna make one pass, popping my engine cooling consumable since I know the small is now here. So I'm gonna lose three planes on the inside of the drop as well. Clicked into the drop a little early, I would say, but it's a GK, so that doesn't concern me too much. Two sits. I'm gonna climb out away. As you saw there, though, it did cost me uh, like six or seven aircraft there to make that attack because it's fighter trimmed three. Enemy Hakuryu already harassing my squadron. I'm gonna stay on the GK though. I know he's expended his fighter, and I'm actually gonna attack that Smolensk. GK is gonna pull away from him. That fighter is actually the GK's strongest defense. So the small GK out of the picture is just small and sky and me. So first pass, I can't pass from this direction, remember? Because he's going to have turned north. So I'm going to... So repub with that guy. I'm going to go behind him here. With my relatively stealthy bombers. Locking in the attack. Looking to make a pass from behind him. As predicted, he's behind that island, so I could not have made a side on pass. Gonna pop my heel here, see how he turns. Still have four seconds, plenty of time. Wanna see if I can get him to turn in? Nope, he shorts that torpedo. Don't wanna stay here for too long. Small AA is gonna chew up my squadrons. Looks like we weren't successful here. 
just gonna F out at this point. So that was expensive. So let's not do that again. Our experiment in taking the full squadron out is not too successful, so this time we're gonna short instead and look for just one clean hit. So we're, because of the 2x6 setup on the Hakuryu, we're gonna have to short several times. Looks like in the meantime though, my Smolensk has made short work of that Repub's HP bar. Renisa looking pretty alone. His A is decent, but nothing to write home about. I think I played with Ip Man Shinto Shinjo Akane earlier. I was testing out my Conqueror, it didn't go very well unfortunately. I think the Smolensk has him. Yep. So I get to make a pass onto this Venezia. He just can't turn very easily. He's smoking now, but now he's just blinding himself. One, two, tells me exactly where he's headed. Oh, wait, there's a gearing. Wait, there's a gearing. Wait, I have a small lens gear. I'm gonna go spot that out. I'm gonna turn my carrier around and head in for that gearing with my fighter. That Smolensk should be able to make short work of the gearing, but he's hiding from the Venezia. Now he's turned north. There he is, with his A is still on, surprisingly enough. Even if the small ones only gets one salvo on him, that's fine. Rake him again for another four rockets. And if small ones get smart because he's in cover, he'll just keep raking that smoke. the middle section. Oh, we got a radar, I think. GK pushing in. Gonna switch over to the GK. Push my hull up. You'll notice I'm playing a lot further back than usual in this pure tier 10 matchmaking. This is because of the difference in the way the game is played somewhat. My damage is not that high. Could probably be farming a lot better, but my first few torpedo strikes were not that successful. You can see how the enemy battleships that got a bit too close were easily punished by my, the heavy DPS of my team. Remember how I noted that high DPM. GK trying to limp away. Henry looks like he made a big mistake right then. GK's gonna burn. Gonna free drop once then. The mosque went in smoke. I'm gonna make sure I drop a fighter here. I want to find that Moskva. There we go. Unfortunately, the GK's fighter can still latch onto me, but Moskva's nice and alone and very vulnerable to my armor piercing dive bombers. Looks like he's turning away. I'm gonna patiently hover outside of his AA range until he commits. I'm expecting him to pull away, but since he's not reacting very much at all, I'm going to do a conventional slingshot. So this is a non-boosted chase slingshot at about 6 to 7 kilometers. I'm steering with my minimap as I come in. Looks like he's running defensive fire, which is interesting. Most people wouldn't even bother in the Moskva. Still got 5 planes, quite healthy. He's turning. Dodge me. Plenty of engine cooling consumable though, to adjust to the range. Unfortunately, my shells strad straddle, but that's quite fine. I'm very happy as long as we continue to hold cap advantage. Because we're so far ahead, I am going to push up. Looks like that Venezia is coming in toward us. Let's push him off the Smolensk. My team does eventually finish off that Moskva. I saw a brief glimpse of those torpedo bombers. Maybe this guy's gonna go after this Smolensk who just got slapped by the Venezia more than likely. Not 
not spotted, not spotted, using my short detection range. He wants me to give him a look at the Venetia, that's fine. Committing the full squadron here is just for all right. Based on their trajectory from the smoke, I can guesstimate at the angle of the Venetia as well. He's angled out along this vector. He's using a gearing smoke, I think? Well, he's somewhere here. He's sitting completely still. Let's see how much engine power he has. Not enough, it looks like. Gonna pop my heel. And you can see there I got a great blind angle without actually knowing where he was. Just based on watching his shell trajectory, because he's turning in toward my team. He's gonna give those torpedoes more time to arm. Might only clip him once on the tail, but if I break a rudder, it'll be almost certainly lethal. Getting my damage in now. The gearing has made it back to my cap, but that's fine. We're up a ton of points at this point. I'm gonna aim ahead. I think I might still be a bit too close. This far torp might short. Yep. I'm gonna deal with that gearing. He's beside a wooster though, so I'm not anticipating on having to deal with him myself. The points themselves have quite quickly climbed into a position where we have a rather insurmountable lead. Popping my cooling consumable mainly just because they want to get in on the action, but not gonna get there and that kill will secure us the win. Nice clean Hakuryu game. I didn't have to work very hard for it. But I'll take it. As you can see, start of a season. We're starting at rank 10, which is apparently irrevocable. Contribution-wise, if we'd lost, I hadn't been doing that much, but I am still middle of the pack. Their battleships there, as you saw, got quite a bit too close, and as a result were punished. And that gearing was definitely too, too reckless. Queuing now. Looks like I'm the only carrier in the queue at the moment. One of the matches just went in, as you saw. Could be a little bit. But anyhow, uh, from the carrier perspective, for tier 10 ranked, uh, the Hakeru is king. Those APDBs are devastating against essentially every cruiser at the tier and most of the battleships outside of, I would say, Repub. Now, Conqueror used to also be pretty citadel proof, but ever since they raised her citadel, citadel from the last tier 10 ranked season, you can now citadel her fairly easily. So I would say Montana and Repub are semi difficult to citadel. And then Burgon is kind of resistant to citadels, but a couple days ago I was playing in my Burgon and I did get citadeled by Hakuryu, so it should be actually possible. I just don't know how to do it, apparently. Which is a bit unfortunate, but... You know... You keep learning as you keep playing. So even now I'm still learning, and so I learned that Burgon can be Citadel, so I'm gonna have to practice at it. And we'll see if we can work it out. Pretty long queue, but this is ranked after all. It's kind of early in the day as well, early in the season even, one might say. You'll have to excuse me. It's still early in the morning. Now playing as a destroyer in this season is going to be very difficult. Uh, sorry, I interrupted my train of thought. I was talking about the Haku, but just generally speaking, playing as a destroyer during the season is going to be very difficult. Carriers are going to be exceptionally powerful, and our, uh, since last tier 10 ranked season, we have seen the introduction of very lethal ships such as the Smolensk, which will definitely make playing destroyer all the more difficult with that extremely high DPM. And then there's obviously an abundance of radar with Stalingrad, Des Moines, and Moskva potentially being popular. Uh, maybe Wooster as well if people try it, although I personally find her AA to be insufficient to repel a determined carrier player. 
so not one of my personal picks, although I might give my AA Spect Rooster a bit of a go if I run out of ideas. But we'll see. Key is taking a little bit of a while, we're having trouble finding a balanced a balance, sorry, for our destroyer player, as I said. It's extremely difficult. To play destroyers in this meta. Uh, everyone's after your butt. So, people are rightfully reluctant to do so. Finally though, we do Q. Looks like it's going to be one destroyer per side with four cruisers and two battleships each. Against an enemy carrier. Uh, the names are going to come up repeatedly at this kind of hour. Oh, Arkyagami on the other side. He's decent. On my side, I guess I recognize Warlord Phil, but other than that... Oh, and the salty guy. I think that was my small one from the last match. Against a Haku on the map Haven, Montana, Burgoyne, Kremlin. And they have a Colbert. So Colberts should be interesting. So unlike the Smolensk, she does have somewhat inferior inferior was her name. She does have somewhat inferior shell arcs because of those lazy kind of Atlanta-esque American shell arcs. Well, French shell arcs technically, but nevertheless. Uh, she can make it work. She has extreme, exceptionally high DPM, and more importantly for me, she has extremely potent anti-aircraft artillery. Never actually played tier 10 ranked on Haven before. This is new to the map pool for this season, if I'm not mistaken. My team is going to be... I guess I'll go B with them. Not quite sure how this map actually works. So this is going to be a learning experience for all of us, I guess. So I was wrong about Matchmaker, by the way. There's no destroyers. So they have a Yoshino leading the pack, Stalingrad. So out of these, Venezia, Yoshino, Stalingrad, those three are the one ones I want to pick on, but none of them really stand out as particularly fragile. Yoshino's a bit more fragile, I guess, because she's a bit bigger than a Venezia, so she handles a bit more poorly. Her AA is no slouch, though, and she's running a fighter. Just gonna run my rockets into her. Nothing else to see, really. I want those 30mm pen rockets to mainly rake superstructure and hit the front of her ship. So Colbert I'm definitely avoiding. The bulk of the enemy force appears to be going down here, so the fight's gonna be at A. I'm gonna launch my APDB to see if I can't get anything done with the Yoshino now. The Yoshino did launch his fighter, gonna ignore the battleships for now. I don't know what the enemy carrier is doing. I guess I could have been delaying sea cap if I wanted. The Venezia has used her speed to get there. I hover into the enemy fighter for a quick second. I'm gonna pre drop once more. Looking for a vulnerable target, but remember there's a cold bear somewhere like right in front of me, I think. Ah. So I'm gonna fly through that flak, and you can see that Colbert flak and the combined AA quickly shredding my planes. So I'm not even gonna get, get, get a chance to do anything. However, I know there's a Venezia kind of semi alone over here. He probably looped into the cap and looped back out, so I'm expecting him to be alone right about here. The Venezia is pretty fast. But I am still going to pre-drop once, just to avoid any unnecessary losses. I'm not even sure where he is, precisely. So let's take a gander. We did get six of our APDBs chewed up, unfortunately. Yoshino pops up. He's kind of vulnerable. He's about to touch the... what's her names? AA range, the Colbert, so I'm gonna have to pop the heal 
But I do want to put some damage onto him because of his vulnerable position. Get the hit off. Loop away. We're here for the Venezia, remember? Or we were here for the Venezia. Eh, at this point I'm gonna F out. In between quite a bit of AA, but there's no real outlet. And I do manage to get some of my planes out. Lost three to a rogue flag burst or something though. Enemy Yoshino continuing to take fire. APDV is going for my Des Moines. This guy definitely needs to get back. Because those APDVs are headed straight for his ass. Hundo percento. I'm gonna try and clear these off. I'm gonna use my fighters to harass. Oh, this is a bit distant, so I'm gonna use my boost to make sure I get into range. Going to rake that superstructure. Don't really care how much damage I'm doing, not paying attention to that. I'm gonna continue moving my carrier I'm in an awkward position. That Yoshino's gonna die to me if he doesn't die to that Des Moines. He's charging the Des Moines for some reason. Pre dropping once. Not gonna make more than two passes ever. As you can see, my position here is a bit out of position, I would say. Yoshino suicidally charging a Des Moines, maybe trying to get his torps off or some shit. But uh, yeah, that doesn't go very well, let's just say. So my Minotaur at this point has smoked up inside the Venetia's cap, he's disengaging using his fuel smoke. Hack is harassing my Thunderer. Okay, well I'm gonna continue to protect my Des Moines because he's the most forward. Looks like the Colbert is farming him pretty heavily. There are the APDBs again. Now Colbert, pretty hefty AA defense. So I'm going to attempt to penetrate with a boosted drop. Okay, I'm going to abort that boosted drop. Remember, he dropped a fighter. Going to swoop in for that Stalingrad instead, passing through the A, unfortunately, but nothing I can do about that. Would have preferred slingshot through, obviously, but you can't always get what you want. Dodging out the Stalin flak. You can see it kind of tracking my movement, though. Looks like my allies on this side have been doing a good job trimming up that Montana. Stalingrad A is decent, but not special. I'm gonna have to wait till the last second here. I want to get an accurate drop. Unfortunately, they straddle. Plenty of torpedo bombers left, looks like, so let's hit up that Burgoon. He's with a Kremlin, but it looks like he's separated from the pack somewhat. I'm gonna do... Well, I want to do a flyby onto my Des Moines and continue protecting him because of his exceptionally forward position, but he is a bit too forward at this point. Gonna light up A for my Smolensk. He needs eyes. There you go, my friend. So fighter for him, which serves the dual purpose of lighting up the Burgoon. Oh, it looks like the enemy Montana actually survived. Popping a heal. Hopefully the Smolensk will have trimmed. Turning outward this way because there's less enemies here. If I turned the other way, I would have gone into the Kremlin's AA aura. Looks like the Burgoon managed to dodge my first pass. But I got plenty of allies here to get defended ribbons off him. I guess this will be a good learning moment. They finally clean up the Montana. Don't have enough planes to make a circling pass. Let's try in the Citadel the Burgoon. So I'm not actually sure how you're supposed to do it. And it's getting farmed kind of quick. But. We will fire luck. I'm gonna sling... I don't even have to slingshot for going pretty fast. And heading toward me. So I can do a non-boosted slingshot. And yep, already inside his AA range. Holding down on the air brake now. Now re-accelerating. Let's try right there. Oh, okay. So I go at the apex of my climb, and I do manage to score a citadel. It's not bad at all. Circling to make another pass. Now I'm gonna lose planes on this, but all I have to do is get pen damage here. Smolens cannot guarantee the finalization, so I'm gonna make sure I get at least pens here. Okay, well that was the idea, but uh, he didn't die. I'll get him, I'll get him. Okay. 
I was concerned about my small and suiciding there, quite obviously. Gonna enter into the cold bear. There's a fighter over him, but I so I bypassed it. Now Colbert has great AA, but he's still squishy, as you can see. He's gonna beach himself here, which gives me a chance to test out- Oh, what is my hall doing down here? Okay, I appear to have gotten myself into trouble. I really shouldn't be here. So he's behind the island at a weird angle. So I'm gonna use my boosted slingshot. Turning on the minimap, turning on the minimap, but you'll note I'm not the most maneuverable thing ever. But you can see there, I executed the turn on the minimap. Now Colbert is very thinly armored, so ideally I would actually wait and drop lower. But, uh, well, RNG says no. And I killed one of the strongest A ships in the game. But yeah, as a thinly armored cruiser, quote unquote thinly armored, I thought I would just overpen him from that height. Because the penetration power does get affected by height because it changes the angle of your drop, but turns out the, the Colbert Citadel is high enough that uh, I just citadeled him. Now I'm going to be bow in on to approach for Stalingrad as I cross the crest of this mountain. I'm going to drop a fighter, if only to give aerial spotting. That will stay even after I leave with the squadron. He's popping defensive fire. No, this Stalingrad can't take Hydro anyway. He's pretty static, so I'm gonna at least force him forward. I did lose a battleship. He's gonna turn quite naturally to dodge. But I have APDBs to come for him after. Stalingrad, of course, is a Moskva variant of sorts. Russian cruiser, let's just say. So his maneuverability is poor at best. To skim him with one of those torpedoes. This game going a bit better for me than the last one. The enemy has been pushed to the border. Don't care about that, Venezia. As for Venezia being a newish pick, what do I think of it? Mm, could be useful, but it's a bit of a niche ship. I cannot see the last known angle of my Stalingrad because of that stupid torpedo bomber icon. Thank you for gaming. Please take that out of my face. A slingshot. I have more than 9 planes, so I shouldn't need more than the 6. Oh, okay. Gonna have to be fast for inside a fighter bubble. Boost, boost, boost. Arm, arm, arm. Get over the target. Toss, toss, toss. Toss. Alright, a bit too far. The fighter made my day. Gonna chase with rocket planes. Now rocket planes don't have quite enough pen for most parts of his armor, so Stalingrad's covered in 50mm midsection plates for example, and I only have 30mm of penetration, but his superstructure is obviously 19 and his nose is 25. So if I just aim forward, I will be quite safe. I'm gonna give my Minotaur eyes onto the carrier if I can. He needs intelligence data, alright. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is fly up I'm air spotting both the Venezia and the Stalingrad at this point, and the Hakuryu. And now that I've found the Hakuryu, drop my fighter. Now my fighter is providing intelligence data. I'm gonna leave the hack because of the armored deck. Much more profitable for me to hit the Venezia, but my allies dispatch the. Uh, what's her name? Dispatch the Hakuryu and wrap it up for me, and that's another clean kill. So anyhow, showing off a bit of the APDB prowess of the Hakuryu. Torpedoes and APDBs are excellent versus all these heavily armored high tier ships. This is part of what makes Hakuryu the queen of competitive, or if you can call ranked competitive. Uh, team score wise, you probably did a little better. Nope, nope. <laughs> My teammates performed equally well. Uh, the Des Moines on my team, probably a little too aggressive. Didn't see what the Stalingrad did, but I hope that he just got burned down while doing his job. That was that. But we'll see. Anyhow, if I go to something more interesting, a detailed report, you'll see that 
damage distribution is pretty even here. Typically in a longer game, you'll spend more time on torpedoes just because you have more of them to spend. But if you're good with the APDBs, you can get the... And you slowly, patiently slingshot your way through a game, you can get a lot out of those APDBs. So definitely, uh, Hakshar Yu is not one to be underestimated. Anyhow, we'll take those two clean wins, maybe try and push for rank 9 a little later. Uh, I did experiment briefly with Conqueror and Hakshar Yu, but did not find the same success as I did just now with Hakuryu. Now note, I'm still at rank 10 right now, just early on in the season, but just preliminary reports suggest that not too much has changed from the last season. Uh, Venetia seems fairly middling. Smolensk seems quite popular, so be wary of those smoked up Smolensks. Do remember that you can Citadel them with the Hakuryu APDPs without too much difficulty, but I believe the Citadel is actually a little harder to hit. It's slimmer in profile than the cold bear, which is kind of, well, fat. So I would say if you drop as high as I did against the small ones as I did on the cold bear, you're likely to get over pens. So be careful. But yeah, the only major contributors to the meta are probably the clever, which will do some interesting stuff, but a DD without smoke in a carrier game seems unwise to say the least, at least against an experienced carrier player. And then Venezia I think is interesting, has potential perhaps, but is maybe a little too specialized for my taste anyhow. Uh, but yeah, anyhow, just a quick glance at my Hakuryu Captain for now. So this is my standard Hakuryu Captain that I use for random battles. However, uh, because this is ranked and you focus a lot more on the APDBs, there is something to be said about taking uh, site stabilization for better bomb aiming speed just for ranked, because you're so uh, heavily focused on slingshotting to get free damage off with your APDBs. So as a result, you might want to go for a build that incorporates Sight Stabilization. So I do use Sight Stab on my Shokaku Captain. So this is my Shokaku Captain with Sight Stab. This is my variation. So you take the Core 9 skills, Concealment, and Sight Stab, and at least you have two points. So with two points, you can take any of... You can either take the two one-pointers, or you can take Plane Speed. I leave it up to you which you prefer. Plane Speed will help you in every game. These are a little more situational, but boosting, remember, is fairly important to getting a successful slingshot off, if you'll excuse me. So as a result, uh, this is the build I prefer if you want to emphasize getting the full use out of your APDPs and getting that maximum performance. Bit of a compromise on my usual no site stabilization build, but this can potentially get you some better results. So this is what I would recommend for a ranked Haku Captain. So take your core 9 skills, uh, and then for ranked, because it's a smaller match and you're less likely to see many GDs which might randomly spawn you, you can actually take sidestep first as your first 4-pointer, and then go back for Concealment Expert probably, and then you're fill out your 2-pointers. Anyhow, that will wrap up our preliminary day one rank session on recording, and I'll catch you guys later. Hope you enjoyed. Cheers.